we have proof that the Red Sea crossing happened. Like proof, not just artifacts on the bottom. We had those. We had chariot wheels on the bottom of the Red Sea. We had all these cool little artifacts. But the coolest thing that I saw is the shoreline. If you've ever watched the Ten Commandments movie, they had that big pillar of fire that came down. That's mentioned in the Bible, this pillar of fire. I just pictured these flames coming down. But when you go to that shoreline where, where it's documented to happen, the entire shoreline is melted sand. And it takes about 3,000 degrees or more to melt that sand. And it's evenly melted. You can almost see like footprints. There are stones infused in this melted sand. This is amazing. You don't hear about it. If it was a proof of evolution, it would be in every single textbook. But it's a proof that there was an exodus, like we're having today. You're talking about the exodus, people leaving the cities. It's happening again. We're all being called out of Egypt. This Bible that we read is so true. We're being called out of Egypt again and again. You know, come out of Babylon. You know, come out of her by people. Babylon and Egypt, those two kingdoms were, were side by side at their max. And so those customs, you see the same symbols, you know, the same people. Like Nimrod might have many different names in different cultures. Why is that? Well, when the father destroyed that tower, what happened? He sent people all around the world to change their languages. So you might call him Nimrod. Somebody in China is going to call him something else. So there's yeah, all you right. see the same type of statues and symbols throughout all these different cultures, pyramids and everything. Why is that? It's because that we were all spread out. And when the father sent his son, he said, you know, preach this gospel of the kingdom to the whole world, to the corners of the earth. And when the son comes back and returns, everyone's going to see him, right? And I thought, me and my wife, this question we used to ask about eight years ago is, how? How are we going to see him what if he shows up in Australia? Right. The, <laughs> land, the land down yeah. under. Yeah, so I was like, hmm, technology. We're going to have iPads. We're all yeah. there on our phones. Like, yeah, yeah that's it. We're just going to be on our phones, and we'll see him that way. No, it says every eye will see him. Not an image of him, not a recording of him, not some post-recording, not some live event streamed on YouTube. This is going to be the real deal. Everyone's going to see. So I'm like, that to me, it, it all starts to make sense when you realize that day two of creation was a legit structure being made. He didn't just sit there and let atmosphere be made and let the trees produce oxygen. Then he would, that would have been like another Sabbath. He'd have been resting on that day. No, he was making the most massive structure in existence that I know of now. That's why we can't go beyond the 60th South Parallel. We can't, we're not allowed to travel there. We can go there on like private, you know, tours and guided tours. But if you start trying, you get in a ship, a fishing boat, whatever, and try to go where you're not allowed to travel, they meet you with military force. We've got videos of people trying to do this and these giant ships coming out like, turn around, you know, we're going to open fire. Like these people are serious about protecting ice. When has our, all of our world powers agreed on one thing peacefully? And they've agreed on this for decades.